Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so I've got another wine <clears throat> that I got from my friends at Creative Palette. Um, I've actually, not this exact wine, but I've had this wine before, different vintage. Um, I went to a, a tasting here in San Antonio that um, they had the Trevento and the Don Melchor people and the winemakers there, and it was really cool. Um, they had their, basically like their whole range of wines, not the whole range, but like the majority of their brands that they have. Um, it was really good. So anyway, uh, so this is the 2014 Eolo Malbec. Not those last ones weren't Malbec. Last week's ones weren't Malbec. They were cabs. Um, so Eolo, what, what is that? It sounds kind of like Aeolus, the, you know, the Greek god of the wind. So, um, that's what it's named after. And, uh, <clears throat> I thought I had the story over here, Eolo wine real quick. Um, here we go. Bam. So, uh, this is hundred percent Malbec. Um, it's the vineyard is in the Lujan de Cusho, uh, in Mendoza. That's Argentina. Um, let's see. Harvested by hand and they did the harvest from April 4th through the 15th of 2014 in six stages. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, sure. Oh, wow. So uh, <clears throat> it's made by Trevento, by the way. So, so the super premium reserve Old Vines Malbec is the pinnacle of the Trevento portfolio of fine wines. Uh, it's chosen in, in honor, the name Aeolo, chosen in honor of Aeolus, the great god of the winds, and is a tribute to the three winds that blow across Mendoza landscape, nurturing the growth of the vines. That's why it's called Trevento. Um, it originates in a special 10-acre 10 10 acre parcel of vines known to produce the very finest quality Malbec grapes, forming part of a larger 50-acre single vineyard in Mendoza's Lujan, Lujan de Cusho uh, zone. Um, the established source of the, Mend of the Mendoza's region's, Mendoza region's finest Malbec fruit, it was planted in 1912. Uh, the small section of vines lies on the north bank of the Mendoza River with the proximity of the river serving as a natural thermostat. Um, they have naturally low yields, they have concentrated fruit, um, and that's the majority of that. All right, so, and then, uh, what else on the, on the scene here? So, um, they are aged 18 months in medium toast level French oak barrels, 70% which are new, the other 30% have been used once, um, and that's it. So let's check it out. Did it start everything right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So far, I sent the leak. I just have three more wines to get through. All righty. Boom. So on the nose, it's got all three colors, you know, red, black, and blue on the fruit. Touch of blueberry, touch of actual plum, a little raspberry, blackberry, a little vanilla. That's the new French oak coming through. Uh, vanilla, vanilla pod, um, a touch of cinnamon, <clears throat> almost like a red hot. The slightest hint of like white pepper. Little, um, I say it like a little spearmint, a little mint. 
touch of cedar box, fresh potting soil. It's good stuff. There's a, a luscious, a richness. The vanilla really comes through right now. Um, very, very, um, 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 almost cherry pie, raspberry pie, blueberry pie. Um, I guess if, if, if there's a plum pie, I guess, you know, like a fruit pie, almost, almost like, almost like the, not like the fruit pie that you get at a bakery, but like a fruit pie that you get like McDonald's or, or from a vending machine, right? Um, something like that, except apple, except it's not apple pie. There's a, a perfume quality to it. A little bit of floral, violet, lavender. A little bit of dryness to it, as in like dried wood. Um, you know, I, last week I talked about like sitting at the picnic table, the old wooden picnic table. It's a little bit of that, but it's more like you walked into like an old shop, an old antique shop with wood floors and all bunch of wood around, kind of like that. But they've got like scented candles in there, okay? Like vanilla scented candles. So I know I've already mentioned vanilla at least three times. It's not overpowering, but it's there. You, you, you notice it. There's a bit of sharpness to it. So a little harshness to it. Um, it's not as smooth as those Don Melchor's. Okay, of course, different. Great. But the harshness is not, it's not terrible. Um, the tannin is a little elevated. I mean, it really coats the, it coats the, um, the gums. Um, think of that. I didn't really talk about tannin from the Don Melchor's. It's there, but it wasn't like over the top. Um, this is, this is, <clears throat> It's not as refined of a wine as, as a cab, the, the, the Don Melchor cab, but this is not your $5 Malbec, okay? Um, there's a refinement to it also. Um, there's an elevated, elevated winemaking going on. Um, you, but you feel like you taste the land on this one, right? You, you feel like you're tasting the dirt on this one in a good way. So, I mean, it's 79 bucks, not cheap. Um, not the most expensive Malbec I've had, but it's pretty close. Um, but is it worth 39 bucks? Yeah. I mean, this tastes like a really high end wine. Um, it, it delivers on the price. If you're hesitant to spend $700 on a Malbec, then don't buy it. You know, buy something that's maybe in the 20 to 30 or $40 range. Um, but if you bought this, you're going to enjoy it. Um, you definitely should have some food with it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good wine. It's expensive, but it's good. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to find out more about the wine. You, you know, hit the donate button over there. Uh, if you go to Underground Cellar, I have a link there also, Underground Cellar. I uh, use my promo code 1337WINE. Uh, it help, helps me out a little bit to buy extra wine from them. Um, that's great. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.